Hey guys, welcome back to another video and today we're going to be solving the lead code question carpooling. Alright, so in this question we're driving a vehicle that has capacity empty seats initially available for passengers. The vehicle only drives east and it cannot turn around and drive the other direction. So in other words, it drives in only one direction. Given a list of trips, so a certain instance of trips, of trip has the number of passengers in it, the start location and the end location. So it contains the information about the ith trip, the number of passengers that must be picked up, the location to pick them up and drop them off. The locations are given as the number of kilometers due east from your vehicle's initial position. Return true if and only if it is possible to pick up and drop off all the passengers for all the given trips. Okay, so by the ending of this, we want to be able to accommodate all of the passengers without leaving any of them off and drop off all of them for all the given trips. Okay, so that being said, let's take a quick look at this over here. So let's just take a look at this example over here, which actually outputs true. So what does capacity mean? So capacity is going to be how much, our, how many people our car can hold. So we can hold a maximum of 11 people. And over here, we have three different trips. So instead of just uh, going over it, let's just draw it out and kind of visualize it. Okay, so over here, we kind of have like a number line to represent each of the directions. So this is the same example, 327, 379, and 8, 3, and 9. And just so you remember, the first value is the number of people, the second value is the start location, and the third value is the end location. So what I'm gonna do is let's just, uh, so let's just draw out each of these trips. So in the beginning over here, we have one trip starting off at uh, the second location. So let's just say two kilometers and it goes all the way up to seven kilometers. And how many people are we transporting over here? The answer to that is three. Okay, so we have that. And then after this, we have one more trip starting at seven kilometers going all the way up to nine kilometers with again, three people. And we have one more trip starting at three kilometers. So let's just do that over here and it goes all the way up to nine kilometers, and that has eight people. So the question that we wanna ask over here is, can we accommodate all of these people inside of our car? So let's just go by this step by step. So we have zero passengers here, then zero over here. But once we reach the value two, let's just use the color red, over here we get three passengers. So let's just add plus three. So now we have a total of three passengers. So at the next uh, spot, we actually end up pick on, well, picking up eight more passengers. So over here, we do plus eight. We're picking up eight more passengers. So in the beginning, we had three, now plus eight, giving us a value of 11. And that makes sense. Our capacity can hold up to 11 people. But if this number does increase at any point, that means that we're not going to be able to facilitate everyone. Okay, so now we keep going and the number of passengers stays the same until we reach the number seven. So what happens at the number seven is that first we're actually dropping off three of the original passengers who started off from over here. So we're gonna do minus three since we're dropping three of them off, but we're also picking up three new passengers from that instance. So we're doing minus three and we're also adding three and that's just gonna cancel off and we're still gonna have 11 uh, people remaining. And at the very ending, which is the ninth kilometer, we end up dropping all of these eight people, so minus eight, and we also drop out all of these three people, so minus three over here. So 11 minus eight minus three ends up giving us a value of zero, and that means that we are done. All the passengers were dropped off and everyone was picked up. So that's all that we're doing, and now let's see how we can actually do this in code. So over here, we're gonna start off by creating a list. So let's just call this list L, and it's gonna be an empty list. And the purpose of our list over here is going to be to add the number of people who are going to get on at a certain stop and the number of people who are gonna get off at a certain stop. So let's first add that over here. So how do we exactly add this? So we're gonna iterate through our uh, car, our trips list over here. So again, the format of it is first we get the number of people, then we get the start point and then we get the end point. So for that in trips, so now we have this information for each of our trips. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our L list and we're gonna append the values. So over here, we're going to have two conditions. So what if we're actually starting? So over here, we're currently starting, right? And when we're starting, we're going to have more people. So the number of people coming in is going to increase. 
So in this case, what's going to happen is people is going to be positive. And what that represents is the fact that more people are entering into the cart. So uh, in that case, the capacity decreases, okay? So that's, what ha that's what's happening when we're reaching the starting point. And on the other hand, when we're reaching the end point, so we have end point, and in that case, what's happening is people are getting off the cart. So when they're getting off, we have less people inside of the cart. So we're decreasing the number of people in the cart, so we're gonna have negative people over here. So that just shows that the people got off. Okay, so now at the ending of this, we have our list uh, and it's ready to go. So over here, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna print out the list and then I'm gonna sort it and then print it out just to show you why we might need to sort our list. And we're using the same example as example four over here. Okay, so this over here is the non-sorted version of it. So what's happening over here is, so we have two comma three, which is the starting point, and seven comma negative three is the ending point for that trip. But what we wanna do is we wanna go day by day. So if you look at, if you look at our sorted list over here, which is this one over here, so we first go to day two, then we go to day three, then we go to day seven, then day seven again, then day nine, and so on and so forth, but we're going in an ordered fashion, okay? So that's gonna be really important, and th that's the reason why we're sorting it. Okay, so over here, we're gonna sort out our list, and now we're gonna perform the last step, which is going to be to add or decrease the number of people at each instance in order to see whether we might have an overflow of people. So over here, we're gonna go into a for loop and we're gonna be iterating through our list L. So over here, we don't actually care about the start or end positions. So I'm just gonna do underscore and we just care about the people. And the reason we added them here is well to sort them in the right order. So now that we have this, we're gonna iterate through it for our list L. And over here, we're going to decrease our capacity each time. So capacity minus equal to number of people. So when we're adding people, the capacity in the car is going to decrease. So in that case, we're just gonna subtract it. Okay, but then when we're dropping off someone, then in that case, so you're subtracting a negative number, which is gonna add. So our capacity is gonna increase when we're dropping off people. So that's what it's going to do. And over here, we're going to have an if condition. So we're gonna check if our capacity is less than zero. And if it is less than zero, that means that there are too many people in our cart. And in that case, we're just gonna end up returning false and we're done with the question, right? We can never accommodate more people than the capacity. So that's the condition for when it's going to be false. But if we do pass everything and we're done with our for loop at the outside of this, we're gonna end up returning true. That means that we picked up everyone and we dropped everyone. So let's submit this. And as you can see, our submission did get accepted. And finally, thanks a lot for watching guys. Do let me know if you have any questions and don't forget to like and subscribe if the video helped you. Thank you.